Hello, this is a video within a video. I assign my students the task of creating a short video to demonstrate some uh, piece of software that students should use. But what I want to do with this video is to show the benefits of using short videos to demonstrate complex concepts and ideas that can be difficult to explain using purely text. This video will demonstrate the video I want the students to create and then discuss how this video was made and some of the key features that you need to think about. But the purpose of it is to show that this can be done very quickly without too much effort or preparation. So let's see what this looks like. Again, this is a video task that I give to my grade six students. And the task is, to review an app that students should use. There needs to be a title screen. And then I would give a purpose, so state a reason for doing it. And say, I'm going to show you one of the most important applications that I use as a student, and this is how I use it. It's Microsoft OneNote. You can use it on Windows computers, Apple computers, Android devices, or iOS devices. and the nice thing is that OneNote is linked across all these platforms. So if I do work on my Windows computer, when I switch over to my iPad, I'll see that information there. And I don't need to carry it or email it or do anything complicated. And the wonderful thing is that it's a rich, rich features. It's got a set of rich, rich features. It's got notebooks. It's like it has sections and pages in the same way that a physical notebook has the one that you're used to in your class. You can add in images, files, videos, and audio, fi audio files. Uh, it, you can even draw in it. It supports any kind of device you want to use. You can type notes in. You can record notes. It's so flexible because it's got a lot of features in it. And it's all free. Now, OneNote looks like a notebook. And you can see here I've got my different books, and inside of a book, I've got my different sections. And these can be different subjects. And inside of each section, I've got my different pages. And pages can be different notes for different topics in a class. So let's see what this looks like. Now, I've got one note here and I have a school notebook. The school notebook is divided into math, science, philosophy, and general resources. And you can see that in my maths class, I've already started taking some notes about numbers and functions. I can very easily add in, if I'm given a resource, something like this, a uh, cheat sheet. I can just drag this file in and attach it to there. So I'm going to attach the file. And it's now in my notes, which is great because I got all my information in one location, one location my notes and my research supporting resources. One of the other benefits of OneNote is that not only can I drag a PDF file in there, let's take this page here. If I drag that same PDF in, I'm given another option. I can, instead of attaching the file, I can insert the printout or insert the content of the PDF in there, making it easier for me to read. There we go. You can see how easy that was. If I have a science class, I've got my notes in here. And if I have a page and I want to annotate it, I can go over to the drawing tab. And with the pen, I can choose a color and I can draw on my diagrams. For example, I can say that the gas molecules just bounce around inside the chamber like this. Easily done. I can also, if I have content that I want to capture, screen capture, I can screen capture anything on my screen and drag that in and then make my additional notes and say, the sun 
there we go. Now I know where the sum is. I can also use applications like Kindle. And if I go into my notes and I want to copy a piece of text that I uh, found important, I can just do copy, go back into OneNote, and paste it in there. And it not only pastes the text in there, it also pastes where the source information came from, which is very useful for me as I, as I uh, gather my notes and thoughts together. As general resources, I can add in document files. As you saw before, I can add in PDFs. I'm just going to attach the file. I can add in JPEGs or images. And I can add in PowerPoint presentations. I can add in a whole bunch of other files as well. You can see how easy this is to use and why it would be good for students. Thank you for watching. And this is where my students' video would finish. But for you, who are trying to understand why I want you to use this and how to make it, let's look at how this was made. So let's analyze what was happening. I was at, at, assigned a task, and I recognized that it would be easier for me to show the concept and how I use OneNote than to tell you. If I tried to explain it to you, it would have been a lot of words and I'm not sure you would have understood it. I created a brief outline of what I wanted to say. Something short. It took me five minutes, not even really five minutes, to throw that together. Now the video should be short. No frills. I don't need to do titles. I don't need to do sound effects. I don't need to do anything. You want it to be short and to the point. Something that you can make in two to three minutes. Then I record the video, again, shooting for a, a short video of two to three minutes, five minutes at the most, if I need that long to explain something. And again, I reiterate the point. It should be short, to the point, with no frills, no titles, no fancy stuff. If I screw up, I stop and I re-record. I watch my video to make sure that it makes sense. If it doesn't, then I re-record it, and because it's short, it doesn't take me long to do. And then I upload my video to YouTube, and again, because it's short, the file size is very small, so it uploads very quickly. And then I give the URL to my teacher, completing my work. So in summary, seven steps to creating a short video that explains something that would take me many words to explain. I hope you found this useful.